Um, so circling back a little bit, getting, well, I guess getting further into the weeds here, um, just at a high level, what is your sensor sweep on a typical vehicle? Yeah, we are uh, not religious about sensors. Okay. So uh, we are in all of the- <laughs> I didn't use that term. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, of course, some people are, uh, have, have uh, let's say, very forward-looking views. You know, it should be all cameras or LIDARs are evil or whatever <sighs> the case is. Exactly where I was going with that. Okay. <laughs> uh, for me, it's a very pragmatic question. I want to be building and deploying vehicles that generate positive margins today. What's the sensor set that allows me to do that? And today, the, the practical way to do that while achieving safety and a sufficiently large ODD is a combination of camera, radar, and LIDAR. Now, that said, we have a pretty interesting sensor stack. It's probably one of the least expensive sensor stacks out there that's you know, not just a pair of cameras. Uh, but uh, our LIDARs are all 905 nanometer amplitude modulated LIDARs. Uh, these, these are like the vanilla of the vanilla, vanilla yeah. uh, LIDARs. <laughs> uh, our radars are off the shelf um, automotive radars. And the cameras, of course, we cameras are great. And I think over time, what we're likely to find is that the capabilities of cameras will improve and improve. And we may be able to drop some of those other, other sensors down, especially the lighters are, are more expensive. But right now, we're focused on building vehicles that can generate positive margins and do it safely. And for that, that means all three. Fair enough. Um, do you use any off vehicle sensors, any like V2X interfaces, anything of that variety? You know, we used to. So in the early days of the company, uh, what, one of the things we've always really been felt strongly about is like, how do, you, how do we stop making excuses and start getting the vehicles out? You know, so within five months of the founding of the company, we had our first uh, public carrying demonstration. So providing rides within five months of the company uh, founding. So very, very fast. And th th there's so much to do. Autonomous cars are hard. And you know the, we didn't have time to solve every problem. So one of the problems that we punted on were traffic lights. Uh, and one of our engineers said, you know, we, we, could, we could build higher resolution maps and we could put the camera in, in, uh, in the car and figure out how to handle all the variations in sunlight and bad angles where the sun is directly behind the light. We could, we could do all of that, uh, but then we don't get to launch for another year. Or we could bolt a camera on a pole on the other side of the on the intersection <laughs> and just have it there at the traffic light, and then it's done. So we did that. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And, and it was actually great because it solved exactly the problem that we got. It got our vehicles out onto the road. It started that virtuous cycle of getting feedback from the customer, figuring out what we're doing well. And as time has gone on, we no longer need infrastructure. So you know, one one thing that may not be surprising is cities don't have a lot of money. And if you go to a city saying, you know, this is great, we're going to solve all of your transportation problems, but we got to, you got to spend millions of dollars to upgrade all of your infrastructure first. No, no, it's not going to happen. So you need to be able to operate infrastructure free. It also is, is nice to know that our vehicles are uh, self-sufficient in terms of all of the safety requirements that they have, uh, that, that, you know, a, a down cellular link is not going to impact our safety in any way. So we've been able to migrate away from that. But yes, in the early days, we did use infrastructure. Today, no more. Yeah, I've seen some other fleets. The U.S. seems to be very resistant to V2X, whereas Germany and Japan and China are pretty much like all in on V2X. Yeah, you know, and I, I have, I don't know if this counts as a hot take, but uh, I'm not a big fan of V2X for safety applications. You think about all of the the surface area, you know, for attacking a vehicle, mm -hmm. you know, like a civil attack or just spoofing or just denial of service. Oh yeah. If, if you build a vehicle, and oftentimes what you hear is like V two X is going to make safety so much better, but only if it's authenticated, secure, and reliable. And I don't know how to make it any of those things <laughs> <laughs> when it's just you know radio waves that can be jammed or spoofed or, or whatever else. You know, if, if this was a, a closed community of vehicles that were that shared cryptographic keys, like suppose May vehicles only communi communicated with May infrastructure, mm -hmm. there you could at least say, hey, it's secure. I still can't necessarily solve the denial of service because someone could still just yeah. jam, jam radio, but I could solve that. But if your notion is that you're going to secure every single passenger vehicle in the world. <laughs> yeah, not going to happen. <laughs> Now that that said, so a V2X for safety, I, I'm I'm really bearish on, but for optimization, hell yeah, right? There's stuff we can do here. 
you know, think about how much time you waste coming up to a traffic light and, and the traffic light's red and there's nobody. Yep. So smart intersections, scheduling things, uh, it, you know, even for, for lar large trucks, you know, giving them some elevated priority through an intersection would save them downshifting and shifting all the way back up and a huge carbon impact every time they have to do that down and back up Absolutely. exercise. So there's a huge amount of advantages that we can get for, for micro-optimizing a route. Um, but I, I think right now, I, I don't know that the, the return there warrants the investment for most cities. That's fair enough. Um, what else can we go over here? Um, have you toyed with any infrared or full spectrum camera suites yet? Absolutely. Yeah. So I think uh, it's a safe bet that if the sensor exists, we probably played with it. <laughs> okay. 